1927, a great part of East Africa constituted a formidable empire under the rule of one man, Shaka Zulu. Only one mighty kingdom stood in the way of Shaka becoming the undisputed overlord of Africa, that of Angoro of the Masani tribe. As was his custom before declaring war, Shaka sent an ambassador with this ultimatum. If Ngoro would yield to Zulu supremacy, both nations could live in peace. Unfortunately, as is apt to happen with heads of state, the ambassador lost his own. the healer for ideal and medicines for the body and soul. And it has been my task for these two long years to record the deeds of those who would forever transform the life of this continent. share my extraordinary portion in life as messengers of King George. Fearful of Shaka's growing supremacy, our good king was anxious to strike a bargain with the noble savage in order to safeguard Britain's colony. Yet we, who had come here to defend our way of life, were eventually bewitched by another. Conto will go see we see Magad. 
we were drawn to the brilliance of that power like moths to candlelight. I'm come to win cozy. Tom hosted. Attila. John Keane. I'm come to win cozy. Isaacs. Captain Farewell, called by the Zulus Fabana. I'm come to win cozy. We see my guardian. And I. Drink, Finn. And thank the good Lord that blood is not our own. Mkonto went cozy. The time has come to clip the wings of Ngoro's arrogance. After this victory in battle, I alone will be Lord of Africa. All lands from River Okambano to the Upoposa will give pasture to my cattle. Then, Febana, we will fly on your bed with the white wings to meet your king. The man you say is my brother. Gods, the two of them. He and his queen in a land where the mind is freely given to the monstrous and the sublime. Describe the cowering masses that huddled in their shadows. In an eerie stillness, broken only by the sound of Shaka's bewitching ivory tassels. How foolish we were, ever to think we could match wits with Africa's King of Kings. Captain Prentice! Wait! Captain Prentice, I sent word round to your lodgings this morning concerning my passage to the wild coast of East Africa. The name's Farewell. Catherine Farewell. Captain Prentice, please, I have gone to great lengths, crossed half the world to secure this interview with you. You could at least have the courtesy not to be so accursedly uncivil. My apologies, Mr. I try then to be as civil and as blunt as I can. No. No? What do you mean, no? No what? Find yourself another ship. Captain, there is no other ship. Ask him. Captain Prentice, now see here. If it's about the money, I want you to know that I'm a woman of means. Yes, I'm sure you must be. Tell me, Mrs. Fell. 
What arcane purpose would a woman of means want to set foot on that godforsaken coast? You're not a Bible hawker, are you? Miss. It's Miss Farrell. No, regrettably, my mission is not evangelical, though it is most assuredly a mission. It's about my father, Captain Francis Farewell. His Majesty's Royal Navy served with Admiral Host, Napoleonic Wars, twice commended for gallantry. Was he? Well, not Joe was in the war. With Nelson at Trafalgar. One of the late great Canadian loyalists I was, with aspirations of preserving His Majesty's Empire. And I, too, was commended for my misguided zeal. It's a French bullet. Inch to the right, it would have pierced my heart. Your father, you were saying? He's gone missing. Two years now. He was sent to the Wild Post in 25. Sent? Well, he volunteered to go, actually, as an ambassador to the Crown. <laughs> the fool. Tenacious is the word I prefer. The quirk of his nature. Inheritable, no doubt. Well, someone had to do something. The local tribes were expanding beyond measure, leaving our colonies virtually unprotected. Britain needed a tenacious, courageous man to negotiate a sort of alliance with their king. What king might that be? His name is Shaka. Shaka Zulu. Shaka Zulu? You've heard of him. Genghis Khan of Africa. Lord of a kingdom twice the size of Europe. His is no tribe, Miss Farewell. It's a war machine, as ferocious as any this world has ever seen. Don't waste your time and money looking for your father. Stop missing. He's dead. Long dead. And may God have mercy. Good day. To relate the events of that remarkable winter of 1827, I shall start at the outset of that most formidable military campaign, the last of the six we fought in Shaka's ranks. At stake was the pride of an empire as mighty as any the world has known. At stake was the honor of its king, his prodigious queen, and their Nubian daughter, Pampata. The last, I say, for even those of us who came out of it alive would die to what we were. Helmut! Spooner! Hard to stop us! Okay, Booster! He's dragging anger! Hi, sir! Get your shit off! Kane! Cut the cable! Cut the cable! Cut the cable! Cut the cable! Cut! 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 A glorious bird with white wings. You know what I've been thinking, Francis? About us and the colonies. No, Finn, what have you been thinking about us and the colonies? There's all the taradiddle, you know, in the final analysis. But even if you do extort from Shaka your singular alliance with the crown, you're as aware as I that the only peace King George wants is the biggest piece of the African pie. And Shaka's bound to see that sooner or later. Why are you Irish so graphically despondent? You're here for your medical skills, Finn, not your political insight. Remember that. Morning, Miss Farewell. My father is alive. Good morning, Miss Farewell. Alive and stranded. I know he is. You hear me? Never just die unacknowledged. It's not in his character. Dying is not a blemish of character, Miss Farewell. It's an inexorable actuality of life, especially in the proximity of one such as Shaka. You back yet? The tribes in the outlying areas of the Zulu Empire speak of Shaka using a log that spits fire. When are you going to fix the creek, Hawkins? Yes, sir. A cannon, Captain Prentice. Shaka himself would never use such a weapon. The Zulus believe it's dishonorable to kill from a distance. Shaka would never use such a weapon, but he would let the whites use it for him. He would, and he is. The devil you know all this. I made it my business to know it. My father raised me to be consequent. Well, your consequences scored a point, Miss Farewell. You can't make sense. It doesn't mean your father is alive. He had a crew, did he not? Any one of those men. Rubbish. But... I know those men. If my father had been killed, they never would have stayed on to serve Shaka. I offer you 200 sovereigns, gold. 
Show your greed, Hawkins. It's a matter for the Colonial Office, not ours. It's precisely the Colonial Office that sent me to you. Typical. Given up on their own man, have they? That is why I cannot. I must persist where others have given up. It's the farewell way. You know, I'm to judge your father's spunk from their own. There might be a chance he's still out there. All right. I'll ship you as far as Zanzibar. There, you decide to stay on board. I'll take your money and land you on the wild coast with an escort. But if instead you choose to find yourself another ship, we'll consider your passage a reward of sorts for your tenacity. Find another ship? Why would I want to do that? After four weeks' march and a thousand miles, we finally reached the northernmost borders of Shaka's empire. of King Ngoro, a cruel ruler of the Masani tribe that guarded the gateway to the Sahara. The task I had taken upon myself to chronicle the events of those remarkable days often left me in wonder of the complexity of men's souls. Especially of a visionary like Farewell, who more than any of us still clung to his belief in the value of our mission. Yet even he could scarcely be blind to the paradox. We, Britain's ambassadors of peace, had turned into mercenaries wielding our swords in Shaka's service against enemies of his own choosing. Such had become our pride, our folly, and our fate. A crystal branch. Give it to me. How distant the memory of when first we arrived and made the acquaintance of this prodigious African Titan. I recall feeling at once thrilled and terrified. Not unlike Marco Polo, I suspect, at the court of Kublai Khan. He must look through the small end to tell it. Mugula. It's fire. Can it penetrate that? It can, Baba. Go now.
they are like the Ecrid bird, stealing scraps from the back of the rhino. Men cannot steal what is given to them freely, my queen. So it is true. You intend to lock arms in friendship with their king? You believe this to be a mistake? My ears tell my heart that soon they will be like locusts, swarming, devouring everything in their path. Do you not see it? They even have your tongue dancing to their language. You are the master of Africa. But even your power may be helpless against such a plague. We must remember to hold that wheel. No need, sir, don't you, Shaka? This is our last battle. Will we all be in London before we know it? Perhaps it'd give us all a title, eh? Sir Nathan? Sir Nathan, sir? That's right. Sir Nathan of both. There you are. Does His Majesty give tarts to Hungarians? <laughs> Sir Attila. Doesn't exactly roll off the tongue, does it? Boosh. I give you this victory, my queen. May the blood of my enemy form a river at your feet. Jovugas.
dead center. It doesn't make sense, does it, sir? Dying in somebody else's mm. war. No more sense than dying in your own war, John. <laughs> <laughs> was ours. The vanquished king escaped, cheating Shaka and his queen of total victory. And if there is one thing no man can do, it is to deprive Shaka and his queen of total and unqualified victory. No man under heaven. Something lovely. Clear away the main stuff. Robert to helm. Way four points. I serve four to stop it. Dumb as a beetle. Ah, oh, Jeremy is. He can't talk. Except with his fiddle. <laughs> I think he's very eloquent, Mr. Hawkins.
Those are the racks for the wild ones, Mom. For them that can't, set their minds on the inevitable. We get one or two every passage. I've yet to see your one make it alive. So, primitive fear seems to eat them up inside, if you get my meaning. The name's Rasmussen. Just plain Rasmussen. We don't stand on ceremony here. No ceremony at all. Wild ones, you say? Wild what? Captain didn't tell you? No. <laughs> Ain't that just like him? Damn on some ship. What kind of animals are you transporting? <laughs> In a manner of speaking, yes, ma'am. Them darkies are animals, all right. I'm afraid I don't follow your meaning, Mr. Rasmussen. Bantu. Negroes. Men are stowed there. Women here. Children on top. Merciful God. Come in. Why did you not tell me the purpose of this ship? I truly doubt, Miss Farrell, there's a man alive who can tell you something you don't wish to hear. Slaves, Captain. I wouldn't have thought you capable of that. How could you possibly know what I'm capable of? But obscure desires move my passion, my confidence, and my follies. How could you hope to know? And why in God's name would you want to? Why, indeed. I find it intolerable, though, that Whitehall would think me so desperate as to book me passage on a slave ship. You pass judgment on me because I barter flesh and blood for the coin of the realm. Yet, is that not what our King George has done in all the wars? Trafalgar? Lisa, Katerum, barter the flesh and blood of men like myself and your father for the selfsame coin? Captain, you violate the honor of the men who died in service to their country. There's no honor in dying, Miss Farrell. Just a deep, dark, desolate grave, which Monday's hero is Tuesday's traitor. Old world's a slave ship, Miss Farewell. It has been since man first realized men were for sale. It's just a matter of who's in the quartermast and who's in the hold. As I indicated earlier, you're altogether free to disembark in Zanzibar and go your way. Long before your spirit can be vitiated at the sight of my unfortunate cargo. That I will. True to the persuasion, never leave an enemy behind. Shaka set out with a handful of his bravest warriors with the purpose of finding Ngoro, the runaway king of the Masani, and dispatching him to his ancestors. With him went Farewell, Halstead, and Isaacs. It was decided that I would return to the Zulu citadel to remain in the service of the queen. Being given to fits of apoplexy, the woman was in need of my medicines. True as that was, I must confess that I felt odd going back there alone. The token representative of our culture. A hostage to fortune. Pampata also joined her father. Destined to succeed Shaka as ruler of his empire, she had to be trained in affairs of state and questions of honor. And dispensing with Ngora was very much a question of honor. True to his own vile persuasion, 
King Ungoro spread his web of treachery. Like Judas with the Pharisees, he sold the King of Kings to the High Priest of Slavery, an American named Kauli. No one must know that the captured man is King Chaka. All who are with him must die. White Africans, all but Chaka. Why, for Francie? Why kill good merchandise? Go on, ask your nigga. Chaka's power reaches throughout Africa. If word got out while he was still within reach, his people would come to free him, and they would kill everybody. Everybody. Isaiah Cowley, a loathsome maggot feeding on the garbage heaps of Africa from Quilimane to Zanzibar. Yet even Cowley would be an instrument of providence, as proof of God's hand in the affairs of both the world and the underworld. Ties moving out, sir. Let's quick berth before we're grounded. Hawkins, would you help Miss Farewell bring her letter to shore? Good pleasure, sir. Jeremy, keep an eye on the cargo. You are the most uncouth man I have ever met. You would let me go, wouldn't you? I was entirely under the impression that's exactly what you most wanted. To be abandoned in this mud hole? As if I were to blame for the life you've chosen for yourself. What you want me to do? Rove the docks, searching for passage like some stray mongrel scavenging for food. No idea what to expect from you, Miss Farewell. Spent the greater part of my life shirking the expectations of women. Successfully so, no doubt. If you think I am going to be daunted by the infamy of this brigantine, you're sadly mistaken, Captain. Mr. Hawkins, kindly restore my bags to my stateroom. Prentice. Why have you stayed on this ship? What are you really looking for? I know your father. But there's more to it than that, isn't there? You've been drinking, Captain. I'll return when you're less ill-disposed towards me. Is there a streak of morbidity running through that fastidious heart of yours, Miss Farewell? You're bored with your world, aren't you? And you wonder what your father's found that's kept him away so long. So you do believe he's alive? What difference does it make? Even if he were alive, he'd be long dead to the world you once knew him as. The home he returns to. There is no home, Captain. My mother passed away when I was little more than an adolescent. We only have each other now, my father and I. And I love him, you see, with all my fastidious heart. Now, if you will excuse me. You'll have crossed the line. Cannon, remember? You said it yourself, your father is fighting at Shaka's side, battle after battle. Now, surely that's above and beyond the call of duty. Africa does that, Miss Farewell. Breaks down the walls between facts and fancy. Is that how you justify the loss of your own soul? To presume that what I do is wrong is to conceive there can be a society where the weakness of one is never an invitation to the strength of another. You can conceive of no such world. I could. Once. 
When? When I was a child. Those few short years I was allowed to be young. I too believed in the magic of people by which they would do the right thing. That's what sent me to the academy. Portsmouth and the war overseas. I so earnestly clung to that belief. Fortunately, my ingenuousness was short-lived. By the age of 16, I'd killed so many men I'd lost count. And one day, they gave me a medal for all the men that I murdered. And I felt a strange surge of relief. Like a great weight had been lifted off my shoulders. And it made it all easier. Made what easier? Stop thinking. Stop feeling. Without the quickening of the soul, God and the devil are one. My scouts tell me that Ngoro has been joined by four men, one white, less than a day's march. Shabak. Is the sky so beautiful in the land of your King George? Not exactly, Baba. You see stars that we do not see. And we see stars that you do not see. Amazing. Everywhere we look. Down. Up. Our peoples are different. Yet you ask that we come together. This nation you speak of, the fruit of our alliance, who would govern it? There would be representatives sent out from our king who, together with you, would um, deliberate, make laws, see to the needs of the people. Your people would know the needs of my people. We would learn, learn each other's needs. I see. How would we live in this nation? As neighbors. Village, near village. And how would these villages be placed? Zulu, English, Zulu, English. Zulu. The land is vast, Baba. There's plenty of room for all. Without crowding. Without crowding, Febana, you mean Zulu English. Until our needs become clear. I see. But what would happen, Febar, if after many generations, the children of your children were still unable to learn the needs of my people, if their stars remained different? 
Would they then leave to go back to the lands where you came from? Or would they have learned to love this land so deeply that no other land could be home? What would happen, Fevana, if this land, without crowding, became crowded? Which of those unborn children would then be called African? Yours or mine? We, merciful Jesus, we bagged ourselves a god. Even in my black Apollo, you're gonna make Cyril Cowley a very rich man. Chain the bastard. Abnel Kulp! Hulu! Hulu! And under cover of darkness, the darkness came. For both Shaka and his queen, who, though hundreds of miles away, shared her lord's plight and the empathy of love. The others? Dead. All dead. Shaka? Arab slavers. Where will they take him? To your world? No, Pampata. To another world. Beyond the Great Western Ocean. And will they kill him? No. They will not kill him. Their death will seem most seductive. Especially to one as proud as he. 
Tom. You must save him. Save Shuck? Francis, isn't it in the best interest of our mission that Shaka is out of the way? Gone. Although unholy, the solution. Tom, to you surprise me. I'm beginning to surprise myself. <coughs> I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Amen. Amen. Come. You've a long ride ahead. young Isaacs gone, there were three of us left, and while I remained a virtual prisoner at the Citadel, they crossed the uncharted wastelands of the Zambezi, heading for Zanzibar, the central meeting point of all slave caravans in the region, the largest slave market in Africa, the place where Shaka's captors had most likely taken their prize catch. The captain only hoped to intercept the Zulu king before it was too late. Before that is, he was loaded as cargo on a Portuguese ship bound for the Americas. Time? Faring well? Now, why would a cesspool like you be interested in my well being? Your well being? Well being? I see you being well. I'd advise you to keep your distance before I blow a hole in you, mister. <laughs> We got that settled. What do you got for me? Prime nigger. First class. No pucks, no flux. Clean as a whistle. Bring him on board. Bring him on!
to hell, Miss Farewell. Take the cable on the port anchor. I want a death stow on that ship! The man lost on the port. Five soldiers. Come on, 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 Put them all back on the boat. Man, I lost them. Two there. Two and a half of us. Six men. In a bar. Oh, this one. Look at them. A little scarred. Okay. 40. 15, 16. Fit. In a bar. Okay. Six. Half of us. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Go, Brian, go. Very much. Shaka is either a master of destiny or its victim. We learn either how to die or how to kill. There is no middle way. And what am I, mother? A master, my son, by birth. Exercise helps them retain full possession of their limbs. If they go lame or flaccid, they'll fetch us nothing in the Americas. I do what I must within the realm of what's afforded me. And mercy, Captain. Is that not afforded you? There are children on this ship. There's one young girl. She cannot be more than 13. What would you have me do? You could make their bondage more bearable. I mean, they didn't mark. Uh, how many children of your own do you have? Me, sir. Nine on five. I came to four. <laughs> how do you tell them apart? With a brown. No, sir. They have names. But they are not cargo. Rasmussen, ask the girl her name. Not to do. Not to do. Malewa, sir. Note in the ledger, the girl who answers to the name Malewa is property of the Defiance, and do the same with all the children on board. Gentlemen, at this age, they'll fetch far more to one scar. Aye, then! Aye! Aye, aye, sir. Cap. 
in the mood for some real buying? Get to that ship, Crowley. This one's fully slated. Hurry right, now. And I don't suppose you have room to spare. Not even for here. <laughs> Y'all look as though you seen a goat. Real enough, all right. Don't worry about that. Oh, let me twist your arm. The river's big. Plenty of ships. Like you say, I'll get you next time. <laughs> All right, let's have a closer look. I'm out of there. He can't swim. Aye, aye, sir. white woman he's ever seen. I should think all others would be a disappointment.
The ivory tassels were very eloquent and the cowardly Farango was easily coaxed to relate the sad story of Shaka's captivity aboard the Defiance. It now became imperative for Farewell to intercept Mongo's ship, but a speedy vessel was needed, one that could outsail the Defiance. A brief inquiry among the locals soon made it clear that the only ship in Zanzibar equal to this task belonged to the Sultan himself. A man of sharp intellect, not easily given to indiscriminate acts of charity, especially toward the British. It would take all of Farewell's gentle persuasion to coax the powerful Arab into lending him his cherished schooner. Yet Francis set about the task with his usual unflappable confidence. Do you speak the language of the Quran? I spent some time in the colonial office in Cairo. His Majesty was somewhat disquieted by the expansionist disposition of the Ottomans. I was entrusted with the unenviable task of protecting Britain's trade routes to the Sudan. And did you? If I had, Your Excellency would not be so lavishly installed on the east coast of Africa. The Ottoman Sultanates proved quite enterprising. As have the British. Take you, for instance. Getting past my guards, I mean. Many more intrepid men have perished in the attempt. Who are you? And what do you want? Captain? Farewell. Uh, Francis George Farewell. Uh, do you know Shaka Zulu, Your Excellency? That barbarian, of course. Well, as we speak, Your Excellency, that barbarian is captive on a Portuguese slaver heading for the Americas. If my information is correct, he was captured not a day's journey from your Sultanate by Arabs, Your Excellency, your own people. All cultures have their black sheep, Captain. Therein lies the value of compassion. There can be no light in the absence of darkness. Take your Crusades, for instance. Pure darkness, that one. Why else would Christians have slaughtered so many of our children in honor of a prophet who was nailed to a tree in praise of the innocent? And it is in defense of those innocents that I am now here. When the Zulus learn how and where their king was enslaved, 150,000 warriors will reign on this coast like a monsoon shower. You are a messenger of doom, Captain. You realize it is unhealthy for a British officer to dispense ill-fated kismet without a solution readily at hand. I trust you have one. I do, sir. Let me have the use of one of your schooners and crew. With a bit of help from the westerlies, I should intercept the brig within a few days. Intercept? A Portuguese slaver? <laughs> I know those men, Captain. They do not readily relinquish cargo without argument. This one will. The brig's captain is a British colonial trading under a Portuguese banner. The penalty for British subjects caught slaving is death. Death by hanging. Trust me, Your Excellency, there will be no argument. But of course, <laughs> why should you believe a word I say? Just look at me. That, my dear captain, is your most convincing argument. You British are customarily known for understatement. Come on, darling. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. 
Just need to be forceful. Forceful, eh, Tucker? You scurvy! No need for that. Let me feed him. Be my guest, Miss Farewell, Miss Farewell, Miss Farewell, Miss Farewell. To death. Who did this? Who did this? He knows. Rasmussen, ask him if he knows who raped the girl. Obane Bolalelo. Obane Bolalelo. Break the grating. Have Mr. Tucker seized. To me, sir. To no blame fool on me. He didn't say bleeding nothing. No, but your expression spoke volumes. <laughs> Mr. Hawkins, 30 lashes for Mr. Tucker. And next time, kill him. She's dead. Ah! 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 
benefit of his charm, Farewell had easily secured the use of the sleek vessel of the Sultan of Zanzibar, and with his companions Halstead and Pampata, he took off in pursuit of the Defiance, plying speedily through the waters of the Indian Ocean down the coast of East Africa. And the captain knew he didn't have long. In a day or two, the slave ship would have cleared the wild coast, veering round the Cape of Good Hope in the direction of the Americas. Time was of the essence. Three masts. Square rigged. Bearing on a course to weather the Cape. That's our bark, all right. Carry him. Shake out every last reef. Crack on all the sail we can carry. I want to be alongside that bark by sunrise tomorrow. I'm here. I'm here. Begging your pardon, sir, but I've been thinking. Wouldn't it be best to let Shaka go? There's a little chance of an alliance now that he's seen us for what we really are. What we really are? What we are is Plato, Newton, Shakespeare, Marlowe. What we are is. Thousands of years of collective insight, enlightened culture. What we are.
had easily secured the use of the sleek vessel of the Sultan of Zanzibar, and with his companions Halstead and Pampata, he took off in pursuit of the Defiance, plying speedily through the waters of the Indian Ocean down the coast of East Africa. Now the captain knew he didn't have long. In a day or two, the slave ship would have cleared the wild coast, veering round the Cape of Good Hope in the direction of the Americas. Time was of the essence. Mast. Square rigged. Bearing on a course to weather the Cape. That's our bark, all right. Karim, shake out every last reef. Crack on all the sail we can carry. I want to be alongside that bark by sunrise tomorrow. The light is on. I'm here. I'm here. Begging your pardon, sir. I've never been thinking. Wouldn't it be best to let Shaka go? little chance of an alliance now that he's seen us for what we really are. What we really are? What we are is Plato, Newton, Shakespeare, Marlowe. What we are is thousands of years of collective insight, enlightened culture. What we are. Portuguese cup. I reckon she's another slaver. No, her hull is too high. She's too fast. It almost looks like she's chasing us. Chasing us? Why, sir? No idea. Only the British police slave ships. We'll know in the morning, though. She'll have caught us by then. Take the wheel, Mr. Hawkins. I will leave you next watch. Yes, sir. Oh, Hawkins. What did Mr. Tucker mean before when he called out to you? No meaning there, sir. Except the ravens of a coward. Hawkins is as guilty as Tucker. You know he is. Hawkins is my first mate. Dealing in him would be toying with mutiny. So you'll do nothing? You think we should both mind our own business to the point of allowing rape and murder? You're a woman of light, Miss Farewell. Stop fumbling in my darkness. Stop being a part of this horror. Ask me why I stayed on board this ship. What if I were to tell you it was to persuade you not to abandon the beliefs you held as a child? It's too long and too late for miracles. It's a question of honesty, you see. I made a fortune from this horror. What right have I now to escape misery when I've been the cause of it for so many? So you'll go on creating more misery for yourself and others. Forgive me, but I think there's more to you than the darkness you choose to fumble in. What? What, Kevin? What do you want of me to still have to give? Nothing. Tomorrow I'll land you on the wild coast with an escort, as I promised. He'll accompany you as far as you dare to go.
You're right, you know. It was the sheer boredom of my life in London that led me to search for my father. Hoping to mesh my life with his again. To find a purpose in him as he had found it in me all those years after my mother's death. And it meant nothing to me that I might find a changed man for in many ways. That's what I was longing for. Change. But I never meant to fall in love. It was one of those adventures in life. I thought I would forego. Especially with a man such as yourself, Captain Prentice. Let it be. I am definitely the wrong man. I seem to love you in spite of knowing that. Are you Tucker? Are you Darth Man? Shag off! Call him down, I says. Call him down now. Hawkins! Louder. Hawkins! Get down here! Quick! Hawkins! Waiting on you, you skirt Judas. <laughs>
Get some water on these decks! Hawkins! He too! He too! Yes, Captain Prentice. Jurisdiction here is decidedly British. You are Captain Prentice, I take it. Mungo Prentice? Farewell. Francis Farewell, R.A.N. Farewell. <laughs> you find me amusing, sir? More than you can appreciate. I appreciate that you've been caught in a heinous and unlawful activity. Any mitigation you wish to offer in your defense? I thought not. In that case, by the authority and rank vested in me by His Majesty, I find you in violation of the Lord Solicitor General's ban on slave trading and herewith detain you to be remanded in custody. The man's Portuguese. He's out of your jurisdiction. No! Such uncommon devotion speaks well of you, Captain. I should not wonder if you and your Jackie hang from the same gallows. Why pursue us when there are countless other slave ships plying the ocean? Because of your special cargo, Captain. What cargo might that be? Shaka, Captain. Shaka Zulu. You mean the slave on board my ship? What became of him, Captain? I'm not sure. I lost sight of him when the ship went down. He commandeered one of my lifeboats, but he could scarcely make it to shore. The currents are too strong. Shaka, not make it. Hardly, Captain. I've seen him survive unscathed where any other man would have perished. Well, that's encouraging enough. 
See, there was a woman with him. White woman. Your daughter. Zulu tribe. Zulu. Zulu. I know we're on the wild coast somewhere. I don't know where exactly, but judging from the maps I've seen, we must be very near the citadel of the Zulu king, Shaka. Shaka Zulu. I must find him. My father is with him. Are any of you Zulu? Are any of you of the Zulu tribe? Shaka, Shaka, Zulu. Shaka. Shaka. Please wait. Thank you. Thank you. How do you say that? In your language?
a king, the poet wrote, a man condemned to bear the public burden of his nation's destiny. And Shaka Zulu, every inch a king, knew that he must bear this burden by confronting the enemy he had left behind in the one place where he was sure he would find him, the gutted ruins of the vanquished Masani kingdom. He must either kill Ngoro and win his head as a trophy, or be killed in the attempt. Master or victim? No middle way.
Barker is alive and hardly well disposed towards us. Which is all the more frustrating when one considers that I was nearing a breakthrough. How so, Captain? Aspects of our two worlds were beginning to come together like pieces of a puzzle. And we were both of us, Shaka and I, looking forward to the final picture with confident curiosity. We... The night of the ambush. He looked at me. And because we spoke the same language, those men, he thought I had a hand in it. And I saw it in his eyes. His infinite regret. He'd wanted it to work, you see, this unlikely friendship. And it pained him to perceive that in the end, we as a people were not worthy of his trust. And that may well be what the history books will say, that we had it coming. But they must also tell how we went out with a fight. As I see it, if Shaka marches south across the Bashi, the Great Kai, and the Great Fish Rivers, his first impact with the whites will be here in Kingston. A mere outpost where a handful of our settlers would fashion a haven of peace in a hostile land. Huh. Well, they won't have much of that, will they? This continent can be so unforgiving. But we'll show them what we're made of. Kingston will be our Masada, and that's where we'll post all our available troops, both English and Dutch. A handful to order for tidal wind. We've come around full circle back to where I came in two years ago. Only this time, Catherine's life hangs in the balance. Let me go with you. I'm responsible. I enslave Shaka. What difference does it make to King George and his henchmen if I die in the gallows at Newgate? Or I'm slaughtered by the very men I shackled for profit? No difference at all, really. Indeed, one might see a poetic justice in delivering you into the hands of your own merchants.
Farewell! Mr. Finn, is that you? Afternoon, Miss Farewell. Get down! Mr. Finn, you have no idea how glad I am to see you. Where is he? Where is my father? I thought you would know. Why me? You mean he's not here with you? Well, Let me go. With me? Oh, no, not anymore. Last time I saw him, he was... Not that. Put me down immediately. Do you hear me? Mr. Finn, would you kindly tell these men I do not like being carried about like a sack of potatoes? It wouldn't do much good, Miss Farewell. They're all set in their ways around here. What was that? I beg your pardon? The last time you saw my father, you were telling oh, me... Oh, yes, yes, he was... How the devil did you get here? On a slave ship. A what? Where is he, Mr. Finn? A slave Finn? ship? Concentrate, Mr. Finn. My father, where is he? I've traveled almost 10,000 miles. But if you were with Shaka, he should be... With you? Call your king! Call Shaka! Tell them I must speak to Shaka. What do you mean my father should be with me? Why on earth would my father be with me? Shaka and Francis. Left together, Miss Farewell, they... What? A slave ship. Gabesi, Zul and Pes... I will contact all the regimental camps. The entire army will be ready to march by the full moon. Gabesi! Wait, Ngoma. There are some, Goma, some who are very close to me, who would ask that the great elephant rise above his outrage. Any? Not retaliate. But your honor is at stake in this. Our honor. There are some, Goma, who know me from the beginning, who would argue that evil cannot be defeated by Revenge. Who are these advisors? Who would make a coward of a great elephant? Look what they've done to you, Nabezita. The sheep wait for its ground. Siako, Sholako, Nabezita. You think I'm going to end in Jovgas? I will have to seek my queen's advice. The road to power is traveled in solitude. And Shaka Zulu, who was no stranger to power or solitude, now felt more alone than ever. Since the night of her lord's capture, Nandi had fought back the shadows of death. Yet despite my medicines and the strength of her will, death had claimed her. It is a good thing, my queen, that you did not live to see this. In my shame, your heart would have been, was broken. So it is true. 
You intend to lock arms in friendship with their king? You believe this to be a mistake? My ears tell my heart that soon they will be like locusts, swarming, devouring everything in their path. Don't you not see it? They even have your tongue dancing to their language. You are the master of Africa. But even your power may be helpless against such a plague. You were right. We cannot share life with these people. Colored bottles of magic that make us believe we are what we are not. A god of life that hangs dead from a tree. Lies, you white stealing lies, Bomana. That is it. The seed waits for its ground, and its roots will be deep. What is it? Blood, his inspiration, his goddess. Solitude. 
never seen such a festive funeral. Well, that's no funeral, Mr. Ferdinand. It's a war dance. Or with whom? Dance? I, I cannot dance, Bob. You, you know that. Dance for me now. Miss Fairwell, you down it. Rubbish.
must speak with him. And Miss Farewell, you cannot just storm in here and call the king by name. Shaka! Where is my father? Where is Francis Farewell? Ufeban. Ublawe is under Zalaba to be tumbemi. What? What did he say? Your father is dead. No. I don't believe you. You speak English. Why did you bring me here? What do you want from me? Batatungane. Ume is clear. When is a bomb come over? What do you feel? Now the land. What did he say? Me. I've taken his daughter, he says. If she lives, if she too has been enslaved, then you will be offered in ransom for her return. But if she's dead, he says, then we'll join the others. Join the others? Genocide, Miss Farrow. He means to purge this land of all whites. Sorry. The question I might ask you, Captain, seeing as how your experience of chains far exceeds my own. I'm already a prisoner. A humiliation and nothing to your stature. Twenty miles distant, sir. You should be hearing them before nightfall. Hearing, Lieutenant? They tell me it's like an earthquake. An advancing earthquake.
Shaka's scouts had told him that Pampata was alive and in the company of Farewell. And his heart steeled against emotion. He caught sight of the men who had changed the course of his life. That. That there, what is it? That. It is a place where we meet, Baba, to speak with our God, O Cristo. O Cristo? You are lying, Finn. You told me that he died. How can a dead God speak? Through the Spirit, Baba. He speaks to your heart. I am Shaka. The heavens themselves address me with respect. Yet I have never heard your O Christo. Does he not wish to speak to me? Perhaps you have never listened. And if I were willing to listen, when would your O Christo be speaking again? Tomorrow, Baba. Tomorrow's his birthday. It is a day of remembrance for us all. Your God has a birthday? <laughs> what strange people you are. But you are right about tomorrow. It will be a day to remember. For you all. Go, Finn. Go now. Go to your people with my message. Tell them about the exchange. My daughter, for his daughter. You mean... I can... I can... Yebu, go now. Come, Babu! Go now! Go before I kill you both! Captain! Look. Welcome home, Finn. Out of the frying pan into the fire. Could this trade off give us any leverage, Captain? Your daughter for the Zulu girl? It's hard to predict what a man like Shaka will do. It may all depend on the measure of his justice. If you were Shaka, gentlemen, and had seen what he'd seen, Humanity transported like animals. The living chained to the dead. With no hope, no dignity. Would you not seek revenge on all that is white? The question is, what is the rightful sentence for our crime? Death of a whole town? A whole colony? Or will Sharker's justifiable wrath be assuaged with the blood of those who actually wronged him? Ready, Lieutenant. Yes, sir.
Two whole years without a word. Two years is a long time, sir. Catherine, she spent two years pining for you. I was shipwrecked. Yes, I know the feeling. You have a lot more in common, sir, than that on. We both use these Africans for profit, one way or another. Or as you sought glory for king and country, I opted for a pouch of gold. The crime was the same in enchantment. Sir, your excuse about being shipwrecked, Catherine, will not believe it. She's too perceptive. You should give her the real reason why you disappeared for so long. You speak of my daughter with such familiarity. Slave ship is hardly the place for romantic interviews. The real reason I disappeared? Mm. Of course, I could tell myself it was because of my mission to Shaka for king and country. But despite my initial patriotism, in the end, I'd made Shaka my own personal mission. I suspect I'd become the same for him. Fact is, I could have left Shaka's world any time I wanted to without any real opposition from him or the crown. But you see, this country, Africa, it caught me unawares. Each morning I'd wake up and find myself more and more infatuated with the place. It's a physical thing, you understand. It's capricious, enticing, feckless, unforgiving, and ever so desirable. Like a woman. You're in love with her, aren't you? I see. Yeah. What a shame, then, for a man to receive a new lease of life on the eve of his own demise. The exchange shall take place here. But I must see Shaka. Talk to him. He wena. He would not meet with you, Febana. He must. He must hear the truth from my lips. No more talk. Our ears still ring with your deceit. Kill me. I'm the one you want. No. No.
never had any intention of letting me go. What are you going to do tomorrow? Murder this entire settlement? I won't know it! You have a spirit of a Zulu. What kind of a spirit is that? What valor is needed to slaughter innocent children? You speak to me of an innocent? Those ships of yours, where do they take the children of Africa? Is there a monster in your world who feeds on our flesh? Huh? Killing us all is not the answer. For when my king hears of this massacre, he will send more ships, and more, and more! You try to scare me, woman. For every man and woman that you kill tomorrow, he shall kill a hundred of yours. And then you shall strike back, and so shall he, until this land is drenched in the blood of our people. Only you can stop this. You have the power and compassion. And what would you have me do? Find forgiveness like your God? Is that not the greatest act of courage? How can I bargain with men who think I'm an animal? By showing them that you are not. He's lost faith in us. All faith. And that places him beyond reach, beyond discussion, understanding. No, he understands. There comes a time in our very own special form of imperialism where people just don't listen anymore. We're hypocrites. We know it. We all know it. We just hide behind a sophisticated culture to mask what we lack in sheer humanity. So when do you reckon they'll attack? Tomorrow morning, first light. That's the Zulu custom. What are you saying? I mean, you and your man come here with all your shiny uniforms, your swords, your rifles, to tell us we're going to die? Well, yes and no, madam. I mean, well, there's always the option of prayer. Prayer? Calling our own bluff, as it were. Pray. For what? For a miracle? Why not? It's Christmas.
Captain, thought you'd be a... Uh... I'm a bit rusty, especially when it comes to asking God to deliver us from a fate I know we deserve. The ship was mine, Captain. Dying is the fate I deserve, not those people in the church. If it were that easy to apportion guilt, Sharko would have killed you this afternoon and been done with it. But he didn't. Do you know why? Because your death, the death of one white man, even a slaver, isn't enough to wipe the slate clean. Because we're all guilty in the end, you see. No matter how righteously we may sing, we know. We all know that we have no real intention of treating as equals people who are thought to be just a notch above the gorilla. Shaka knows that. Shaka knows that. Shakespeare tells us that Henry V, Lord of the Britons, on the eve of his decisive battle against the Franks, shed his kingly attire and went down amongst his troops, curious to know how each soldier was coping with the prospect of death. Caught up in that self-same curiosity, Shaka, Lord of Africa, descended onto that unlikely battlefield, where his opponents had gathered under the sign of Ucristo. Read to me, Mbuyaz, from the book of he who died for your people. For us all, Mother, he... He died for us all. Ah. So Shaga will not have to die for himself. Your own words betray you, my friend. Now, read. Read me some blessings for tomorrow's battle. There are no prayers for war in this book. The Christ, who Christo, did not believe warfare is in applicable solution. What then is an applicable solution? Forgiveness, Baba. He taught us to forgive, and in that teaching, we find strength, hope. And Shaka's curiosity grew as he examined the world he was set on destroying. Its quirks, its oddities, its wonders and follies. The intricate workings of our hearts and minds. The enlightenment, the hypocrisy, the pretentious arrogance and insight of 7,000 years of tried and tested contradiction. And he gazed into the privacy of our fear and saw those sitting there, farewell, halsted, myself and the others. And he realized that in our moment of utter helplessness, we turned not to a belligerent deity who wields a sword of vengeance, but to a miserable wretch of a god who could ill avoid his own death 
let alone be the saviour of others. The night he met his death, the Lord took bread, broke it, and gave it to his apostles, saying, take all of you and eat of this, for this is my body. Then taking the wine, he gave and the thanks to his apostles, saying, the blood of the bull, Take all of you and drink the blood of O Cristo. Un conto in cosi, visi magadi. Rituals of one nature because, as a people, we are just that. One. of people to do the right thing is alive and well after all. I wonder how long I'll be gone this time. Two years? More? <laughs> One thing is certain. The next time my father can come looking for me. For us. <clears throat> it's just arrived for you, sir. My messenger. He could only get through this morning. <laughs> From the governor, Somerset, Cape. What is it? Seems upon your father's fervent recommendation, the governor has granted me and Jeremy immediate, unconditional pardon. <laughs> <laughs> For uncommon service to king and country. <laughs> you know, he had to have done this before he left the Cape. That's remarkable. He already made up his mind about me. Well, let it never be said we farewells lack foresight.
Jeremy, you must tell him the news. Jeremy! Jeremy, we have a letter from the Cape. What is it the poet wrote? Any man's death diminishes me, for I am involved in mankind. And for those of us who are involved, the solution to hate can be only one in the final analysis. What would happen, Febar, if after many generations the children of your children were still unable to learn the needs of my people? Would they then leave to go back to the lands where you came from? Or would they have learned to love this land so deeply that no other land could become home? Which of those unborn children would then be called African? Yours? Oh my. <laughs> 